Great Speckled Bird was a vehicle for getting out news and information uh, about the counterculture, about the various movements, civil rights movement, student movement, and particularly the anti-war movement. The name for the paper comes from an old Southern hymn, The Great Speckled Bird, which was popularized by Roy Acuff on the Grand Ole Opry. And the song in turn comes from a verse in the Old Testament in the book of Jeremiah. This is the bird that tells the truth and is shunned by other people. The goal was to speak the truth. The goal was to give a voice to people who didn't have a voice. People like uh, workers on strike, black people who did not have their rights, Vietnamese peasants who were being killed by American bombs. We took issue with uh, Georgia Power. We took issue with Coca-Cola. Lots of stories about the police, lots of stories about the mayor, Sam Massell. And it kind of uh, opened up a whole world for us that you did not get reading the Journal Constitution. Reports on um, marches on Washington, anti-war battles in the streets in Chicago or New York. There was a lot of anti-draft uh, resistance and we gave voice to all that, you know. As you might imagine, uh, a newspaper like The Bird uh, was not welcomed by traditional Georgians. Uh, they weren't used to our uncensored prose. They weren't used to nude photos. Uh, they weren't used to our radical politics. They weren't used to scatological cartoons. And uh, all these things appeared regularly in The Bird. And so, uh, as you might imagine, a lot of people were deeply offended by that. And as a result of that, The Bird faced various kinds of harassment throughout its history. There were loads of kids that sold the paper, and um, there was a loitering ordinance that they were using against kids on the street. It was a city of Atlanta ordinance, and we got it thrown out of court on the on grounds. It was unconstitutional because it was vague. I mean, it could be enforced for anything. So it was just one of those, those catch-all things. And if they couldn't think of a, a charge, somebody they didn't like, that was it. I don't think we ever lost a court case. I mean, but we were always in court about one thing or another. One day I read an ad in the back of The Great Speckled Bird and it said you could uh, make money by selling the bird. I went down to the bird offices and bought uh, 50 copies of the bird. So I took it to school at Westminster the next day and tried to sell some copies at 35 or 50 cents a piece, but I really couldn't uh, seem to make many sales, so I sort of wandered my streets of uh, my neighborhood and uh, went door to door selling the bird to my neighbors if I could. One particular woman was totally outraged that I would bring such a uh, you know, piece of evil incarnate into her neighborhood, into her, into her home. The word started to spread more and more, and people would confront my dad at the golf course, and. Uh, you know, scream at him that his uh, radical eighth grade son was uh, selling, the, selling the bird on, in Buckhead in that school. It shows how naive I was about the, uh, about the great defenses people had put up to try to, try to protect themselves from the um, hippie and liberal influences that were coming into Atlanta, the very ones that we were trying to tap into and learn more about. We tried to make the paper as uh, colorful and appealing as possible. The people who would say, we need more white space in the paper, kind of won out. And it, it gave the paper an airier look and a cleaner look, and we kind of liked that. It's a very exciting paper in terms of photography. We had three main photographers that put those pictures in week after week after week, although anybody who brought pictures in, generally we would take and put them in the paper. Once people realized that we would publish things like that, people started bringing in their, their photos and their poetry and their graphics to the bird, and many of them were published. Everybody who was involved in the staff um, was welcome at editorial meetings. 
and every story that somebody was interested in doing was presented at the editorial meetings. And yes, some of the covers were controversial to say the least, and the covers were always talked about as well. That was always an issue in those meetings. One early morning in May of 1972, um, somebody firebombed the front of the, the building where most of our production facilities were. Perhaps it was coincidence, but this happened um, after we had been hitting the Macell administration particularly hard about um, housing code violations and slumlords who were tied to the Macell administration. And then there would be the right-wing people who supported the, the Vietnam War and supported Nixon. There were people who were racist and didn't like our pro-civil rights states. I mean, so we had a, a fair number of enemies, so to speak. <laughs> you know, there were rumors at the time that, that they did it themselves to, uh, to get attention uh, or sympathy. And, as I recall, not much damage was done, but you know, either way, somebody attempted to uh, burn the place down. The arson squad from the Atlanta Police Department came out and said that, um, well, yeah, this is definitely arson. Now, apparently, it was the extent of the investigation. Nothing ever happened. They never, as far as I know, made a serious attempt to find out who did it. The bird originally got together around opposition to the war by the mid-70s, the Vietnam War was over. Most people worked on the bird for very, very, very little money. Our staff we paid our staff members like $25 a week. Well, you can only do that for so long when you're young. The street scene that had provided the sellers for the paper on, you know, had largely gone. So it just gradually dwindled and eventually we just decided to close it up because we were only circulating a few thousand papers. We had been accustomed to doing 20,000, you know. So. Well, as we gathered here today, I was going to say I'm privileged to be working for peace, working for good We just celebrated the 40th anniversary of the founding of the bird. And that's why we wanted to have so many exhibits so people could see, in fact, what we, what we did at that time. The legacy of the bird uh, continues today. The bird introduced Atlantans to uh, some ideas which they hadn't really heard before, ideas like women's liberation, gay liberation. We were the voice of all those pro progressive issues for this city. If those struggles did not have a voice, I think we would be a very different city today.